I was, I was, my head was in the Italy sphere. <gasps> you should see what I wrote down. You'd be so proud of me. Look, light little Italian red. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to another week of blind tasting. Contrary to the last couple of weeks, we're actually going back to normal, finally tasting what we're good at, wine. We're talking still wine, not pet nats, not beers, actual wines. And of course, thank you to Sometimes Always for the marvelous selection this week. And catch us on the Discord just below. You might be able to even find some cheeky discounts via Sometimes Always on there. Let's get into it. All right, cool. Wine, red one. Mmm, rich and varnishy, like in a really sort of like potent way. Not in the sense that it actually smells like you should varnish your deck with it. Light red, got a kind of Pinot fun color. Ooh, but it doesn't smell like Pinot. No, it doesn't. It smells like something a little bit, little bit bigger, a little bit ballsier. That's like kind of purpley, purpley fruited, bit of blue, bit of red, kind of that mix of the two, bit of a kaleidoscope there. A little bit spicy, not too much at all. Uh, just just a little bit of uh, interest on the palate as opposed to some, like it's a very light red wine. It's not hectic or heavy by any means, but at the same time, there's still just a little bit of interest there. There's something so soft about this before it's like, it starts soft and then just kind of laser focuses right down the palate. Italian-esque, probably. Uh, if not a really, really good uh, interpretation of it in Australia. I thought that was Nebbiolo. I'm not so sure it is, uh, to be honest. I think it's uh, potentially uh, like a Pinot Nero or a Barbera. It just doesn't seem to have the full-blown tannins. Six spots of this bad boy. It's got this kind of Grenache vibe to it. Yeah, all about this. I reckon this is about um, 45 buckaroos. It would be something that you could easily drink quite quickly now. I reckon this would develop into something really interesting over time. We're going to something that's a little bit more vibrant, but nonetheless still light uh, in, in, I guess, intensity. It's really leafy. It's like stamp, like, um, like sticks. It smells a bit like sticks. Mmm, love the smell of that. That's uh, rich cherries, uh, like your Nan's Christmas cake. It's got that really like nice fruit cake through it. A lot of people don't like fruit cake, and a lot of people are wrong. It's delicious. Oh, it smells like juice. It smells amazing. Uh, we're back in confected categories here, looking at like the grenaches and sort of lighter, fun things. A bit perfumed as well. This, I think, this one might might need a bit of time. I'd like to see this probably. I'll probably taste this again when we come back into the room and see what everybody says. I don't think this is going to set me back a lot. You can you can actually find some really good deals here. I'm going to go twenty eight dollars and uh, and see how we go. But uh, cool wine, very good wine, very high quality, and uh, absolutely and utterly smashable. You can crush that. Switch of gears. We're onto the white wines now. What are we thinking here? All right, white wine. And it's a little bit green. It's got a little bit of a green highlight to it, which is kind of fun. Oh, it's pristine. It's pristine. It's pretty. It's, it's floral, perfumey, aromatic, fragrant, like a uh, sweet. It smells sweet. White, white fleshy fruits. Acid that sends you to heaven. It's got this like really effervescent, just like uplifting quality to it. Like completely crisp, tight, just fresh, lemony and fun. Wouldn't surprise me if this was like a, Christ, could be, could be anything. Could be Pinot Gris, it could be a uh, really lifted Gruner Suave. Lovely and chalky too. It's got this really chalky acid drive that runs right through the middle and then that flavor of just kind of classic stone fruit, citrus, citrus peels and citrus juice and kind of rocky min minerality. Oh yeah. Um, Riesling, I think it's gonna be a little bit more expensive. I reckon that's $55. And I'd like 12 of them as well. I'm spending some money this week. Why not? I got paid on Tuesday, so why wouldn't I? Back to the red. Really dark now. Smell that all day. Put my nose a little bit too far into that. Smelled, uh, honestly, uh, a little bit like shoe polish. All right, what I'm seeing is a decent amount of oak handling, but very respective like to the fruit itself. Really quite uh, restrained. I reckon this is old, old, like an old school style done in a really modern context. I know that probably makes absolutely no sense to you, but kind of imagine like uh, clay and dried leaves in the forest. Uh, but yeah, it's fi pretty fig leafy. So that's really cool. Okay, instantly. This wine compared to the other two reds that we had, completely different mouthfeel. Well, the other two were like close to each other. One was a little bit thin and one was a little bit fuller. This one's much thicker again. I'd upgrade that to Nebbiolo. Uh, wow. Uh, 12 pack, 
80 bucks. Dense, power, weight, drive, length. Yeah, excellent example of what you're, if, if this is your style of wine, you'd be hard pressed to find a better, better example at a good price. Uh, good stuff, go for it. So again, another, we're not really going with dense reds anymore, are we? We are heading into summer, I guess. Yep, uh, this is on the nose, the smell that I haven't been able to nail down what it is through 20 odd weeks of these tasting. It's kind of like a sour sort of smell a little bit. Uh, it's quite dark fruited and peppery and it's still plummy. So it could be like an old world Syrah. All right, we're going into the funky territory. Uh, all right, so black olive tapenade uh, for days, which really tells me we're sitting in the Cabernets. We're sitting in either Cab Sav, Cabernet Franc, or Merlot. Wow, the tannins here are really, really cool. Like, you can just see them fall away in just like a very, very short succession of time. Yeah, the nose is still prevalent. Like, the nose is still there. Like, you still get an element of what I'm talking about with the sourness, but at the same time, it's just combined with these really lovely um, raspberry, strawberry, but also like darker fruits. It's cool. Like, I'm about it. Uh, I hope they're charging a premium for this because I think this is a seller worthy wine if I've ever had one recently. Oof, the lovely dark fruit right now, but in the next couple of years, I think this will be an absolute fine form. Wine number six, finishing up on a white. Looks incredibly similar, maybe a little slight touch yellower than the previous white that we had at wine number three that I correctly identified as a Riesling. Really steely and tart and really amazing acidity. Oh, yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like this. Uh, like, it smells like aged Semillon, potentially even a, like aged Riesling. Um, let's see how uh, the palette shows. Look, honestly, I think it's aged Semillon. Maybe Eden Valley Riesling because it can be very lemony up in Eden Valley. Clare Valley tend to, tends to be more lime. I reckon I've guessed Pinot Grigio once a tasting this entire time and not once has it been a Pinot Grigio, but today could be the day. Uh, so I'm gonna shove uh, 80 bucks on there. If it's anywhere less than that, it's amazing value. Uh, so kudos, absolute kudos. Interesting lineup, couple of big winners in there, couple of medium grounds and a couple that I can probably leave for the other boys, but we'll see what Brendan and Noah think. Welcome back what to another <laughs> week. We're actually doing wine this week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah we, did, we did wine. This we did is, wine. This we, is still wine. This is, yeah, this is still wine. Back, back to our forte. What do you guys think? Lineup. Great. Cool, huh? Fucking good lineup. It's like a return home. Well, let's start at the top, the one that actually has the least amount in the glass left over. I liked it. Yeah, it was great. Awesome little fairy tanner, nice racy kind of red berries and like blue purpley fruits. Like really good Grenache, I reckon, for sure. Where are we at, bro? 39. Ooh. Bargain. Good price. Bargainsville. Good we price. Here. Ooh, Nebbiolo. Nebbiolo. It is Neb. Oh. Mount Trong. It's Australian Nebbiolo. It's Aussie Neb. Oh, so I was wrong about wow. everything. Well freaking done. From the Pyrenees. Mount Ma yeah. Oh, wow. Holy Pyrenees. shit. From the Malakoff Vineyard. So a, a hailed vineyard of Nebbiolo. One of the top tier, god tier Nebbiolo vineyards in Australia. Never encountered the brand before. Never at all. Great. I thought Nebbiolo had more tannin to it. It did. And I think this is where the sort of Grenache vibe comes in. Because it didn't showcase to me a ton of tannin that would make me think Nebbiolo. But this is Australian as well. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have this, like, the Australian Nebbiolo fruit character that I generally associate it with, like, really overripe strawberries. Mm. It's, it's just too hot in Australia to grow, like, Italian looking to Nebbiolo. That level, yeah. Um, but overall, this is a great bloody wine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If, you're gonna, so if you're gonna make Nebbiolo in Australia, like, Pyrenees is the really good spot. Can't believe you thought it was Italian, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. Number two. Uh, juice. Nero yeah. Dabla. That's juice, oh. isn't it? Good point. Narrow, juice. for sure. Racy acid, like bright cherries, lovely kind of tannin structure. It's it's good narrow, I think. All right, what do we got? Ooh. Juice. Yeah. Is it in the Gym tree. Gym tree. Is it Grenache? It is. It wow. is Grenache SBE. Small batch. Must be. SBE yes. small batch. They've reinvented their brand. And I'm, yeah. re I'm, I'm vibing on yeah, at sure. least this one anyway. This is looking really cool. Um, handmade, free from convention, free from restraints. Um, I think they, they, they're famous for doing like a lot of biodynamic. Yeah, um, no, like super, super, bonnet, super, bonnet. super healthy um, fruit in the McLaren Bell. Like, you know, it's a very, very green, like um, organic and biodynamic region. And these guys have been kind of the champions of it. And they supply a lot of the great manual makers around McLaren Bell as well. Awesome, awesome juice. Juice. 
juice. <laughs> Moving onwards, the first white wine to line up, and it was a nice one. It was a nice I one. I liked this one. It was a nice one. Yeah. What do we got? Oh yeah. Oh, in my, in my zone at ballpark, we are in the zone. Is it the? Oh, ah, yeah. suave. suave. Hey. Every time I think Here it's fucking go. raising, it's always suave. God dang you, Garganaga. Yeah. You bitch. It's the. Um. It is. It is the the dark horse of textural whites. Uh, with high acid, yeah. Um, very fun little Italian number. Yeah. That's cool. Tumbler wine for sure. Chug a lot. All right. Four. Now this was. Tell fun. us how much you love this one, Brendan. But Definitely it's in that back. area. I I went six. I knew you'd go for twelve. <laughs> it's fine. a no-brainer. Yeah. There are a lot of things that are it, and for this, for me, not it. Fair enough. I I, I understand why people and like for yourself would not like enjoy this wine. Yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty intense. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. It's like going nine rounds with Mike Tyson. It's like, oh fuck, I'm you got to be a masochist. Frightened. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I'm ready for it, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. All right, what do we got? Oh yeah, you were well big boy. Yeah. Oh, what it's Berg. Wow. Holy shit. Wow. Okay. It's big boy Berg. It's Cote d'Or, Bourgogne, um, Le Champs. It's a bit Dijon. of a wider scope blend across the Cote d'Or, Le Champs d'Argent. Um, cool. Uh, French wine center. Yeah. Jono. Good day, Jono. How you doing? Good Bring stuff. Uh, and we've seen this out of warmer vintages. We have definitely seen Burgundies look a lot like Northern Italian Nebbiolos. Yeah, because Northern they probably re like lose the, like on that kind of lower coat door, like floor where they can get a bit riper, they probably extract a lot more tannin. They make it the same way, so they, this will probably age really well. All right, now the first of the wackos. I was into Wack this. I knew you would be. It's Black Olive Tapenade for days. This is Cabernet, bro. It's got to be in the cabs, if not Merlot. It's yeah. got to be. It feels like really quality cab. It's like got that kind of peppery thing. It's yeah. luscious. Oh, Forty. okay, good value, good value. Good value. Oh, what's this? Um, this is um, Panami. So this is, I think it's um, Southern Vindif French. Lo-fi wine, so pretty natty boy. What have we got? Cabernet Franc. Cabernet Franc. I said Cabernet, but I didn't know. One of the Cabernets. Cool. Loire, Loire yep. Cab. Great, 12.5% uh, alcohol, nice and restrained, not too soupy. Mm. Um, I'm into it. It's got a bit of a bitterness, but I reckon this will uh, probably develop pretty well. Uh, yeah, yeah it's all about it. A bit of bunch work, I reckon. Yeah, for sure. on that one. So, finishing this off, white wine, bit of age on it. I'm thinking Sam. Oh. I thought 80 bucks, and I got that one vibes. Oh, wow, huge. I got that one vibes. 83. You were on Have it, you done today. it Have you done it? Oh, huge! <laughs> Excellent stuff. He's one. nailed it to the wine. <laughs> Genuine nailed it to the wine. For God's sake, I hate it when you like this. <laughs> <laughs> Bang. I was pretty good with most of this lineup, but that's kind of kind of good. That's very that's, impressive. That's when it's called an old semi on that one. Far out, dude. Well done. Yeah. Give him the go. crown. <laughs> Give him the crown. <laughs> there we go. He's very annoyed right now. <laughs> uh, no, that's impressive. That, one is, of most... that is one of the benchmark wines in Australia. One of Australia's most iconic wines. Like, yeah, it's top shelf. Yeah. And that is that is seven years old. It's got a long way to go and that looks so juvenile. That's that's another 20, 25 years easy. Um, well, that's a great way to round out a tasting. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Comments, obviously, down below. We're active on the Discord. But until next week, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. 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 B